Right. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, this is our first session for the uh, OpenStack Caracol PTG. And as usual, uh, we start the week with uh, our cycle retrospective. So we can reflect about like the previous cycle, understand uh, what uh, were the good things that happened, what we could improve for the next cycle, and try to come up with some action items. And yeah. Uh, so we already have like some items here on the list, but I think we can uh, get this opportunity to uh, add a couple more things. So, but first um, I would like to go through a round of introductions maybe. And then um, I think there are some like new people in the room and we can get to know a bit more about uh, the, the, the new people. So I can get started. Um, I'm Carlos, the OpenStack Manila PTL. I've been serving as PTL for three, four cycles now, and I worked in Manila for quite a while. Um, so yeah, um, I'll hand it over to Ashley. Hey guys, uh, I'm Ashley. I've been a contributor to Manila since uh, like 2021, and I've been working for Red Hat for the past two years. Um, it's excited to be here for this PTG. Thanks. Hey, uh, got them. Hello. Hi. Uh, so my name is Gautam Pacharavi, and uh, I work with Ashley and Carlos, and I work for Red Hat. Um, have been actually uh, contributing the, for the, to this project for quite a long time now. I think my first contribution should be somewhere in 2015-ish. Um, so it's been a while. Uh, so I've seen this project grow from uh, being back incubated to what it is right now, uh, widely used in a variety of uh, different kind of, uh, you know, environments and stuff. Um, so very excited to be here to plan the next release uh, of it because that's usually, um, you know, what uh, keeps it going for the project you know the the community has been very dynamic uh, and you know uh, it, we've all, we've been churning out really good innovation uh, that's been useful to people so really excited to be here and see what's in store thanks thanks okay um can kaike could you please go next sure hi i am kaike i've been working with manila i believe two years uh, and uh, I work in a, a top team and it's a pleasure to have you here guys. That's all. Thanks, um, Maurice. Yes, uh, hi, uh, I'm Maurice. Uh, I'm working at SAP running Manila there uh, with another backend and I'm with Manila for several years now. Great, thanks. Um, Kira? Uh, hi guys, uh, my name is Kiran. I work for Manila last couple of years, along with Morris. Uh, and previously, uh, Dimitri was also there who contributed to Manila. So I worked under his guidance a couple of uh, months and then now working along with more. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, Vida? Hi. I'm uh, Vida. I work uh, with uh, Carlos got them and Ashley at Red Hat, and I've been contributing to Manila for several years now. And I also uh, am uh, one of the uh, uh, bug managers, and uh, I've been having the bugs our role for a few years. Um, and I look forward to this PTG. This is, uh, I've been at previous PTG several times, so I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Thanks, Vida. Um... Uh, hi, Carlos. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Saravanan uh, from NetApp. And uh, so I've been in this project only for two and a half months. And uh, we are still learning from uh, the FIT team, uh, Kaik, Felipe, and Thiago. 
Yeah, looking forward. I mean, this is the first PTG and looking forward to contribute more for Mandela project. And uh, I like this team very much. And all of you are so good and so kind. And uh, thank you so much for supporting us. And thank you. Great. Thanks. Um, yeah, Jayana. Yeah. Hi, Carlos. Hi, guys. Uh, this is Jayanan. <clears throat> uh, I'm also from NetApp, uh, working with Saranan. Uh, right now, um, I I am trying to understand Manila. Uh, so far, no. I'm trying to uh, understand more and uh, contribute more from the next uh, release onwards. And that's all from my side. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, John? Okay, uh, okay, skip. Um, Felipe? Sorry, guys, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, nice. So, I am a work at NetApp. I've been uh, running OpenStack since 2020, I think it's almost more, more than three years. And I think that's the, the last PTG that we have been part of because we, we are living next month in it up. And now uh, Saravan and his team will, will conduct the project in the up side. So I think we can, I'm, I'm trying to help them to understand the process and, and to, to help them with the discussions that we can have during this week. And I hope that you have a productive week as usual. Let's go. Great. Thanks, Felipe. And Thiago? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Thiago. I'm working in NetApp team. Uh, I this project in Manila project since the um, beginning of this year. So not much time. And this is my second PTG, uh, like Philip said, uh, the last one for part of the team. And it's nice to be here again. So thank you. Cool. Thanks, guys. Um, John, can you hear us? OK. Uh... Right, so uh, welcome everyone. Uh, it's really, really great to see all of you here. And um, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a very productive uh, PTG week. And I'm really excited for um, all the discussions we will have th uh, throughout this week. So thank you everyone for joining. The participation is very, very important. And uh, it's uh, one of the, ways, the things that keeps uh, it going and collecting everyone's feedback. So thank you very much for joining. And yeah, um, we, usually follow the structure of our retrospective here. And in this retrospective, like it's the first thing we try to do in the PTG week and we'll go over like uh, pretty much what went well over the previous release and also some things that we can improve. So um, I think we can get like five, seven minutes to fill up uh, some of the things and add some thoughts to this and then we can discuss them and um, try to uh, uh, come up with some action items and other things that we can enhance uh, for the next release. So um, I'm dropping the Etherpad link in the meeting chat. So please take a look at it. But uh, it, the, the link is Caracal PTG Mandela retrospective in case you have like a, you only like to type it. So yeah, um, let's get six minutes now that are like I kept talking, let's get some minutes so we can fill up um, some topics and then we can discuss them.
Okay, I think um, we can get started. Uh, we had some minutes to to add some topics, so thank you everyone for um, sharing your thoughts there. So we can get started with uh, what went well first. Um, yeah, so first thing is uh, mentoring events over Bobcat, and I think, uh, yeah, Gotham Ashley would like to comment more on that. No, and this, um, I mean, nothing more than what we've uh, written out there, I, I, I guess, but uh, if there's anything um, for the new uh, folks that are here, we we have always, um, you, you know, uh, pretty open to new contributors. And we, we participate in a few community-driven activities to to actually encourage this. Uh, and a couple of those are, are mentioned on the on those lines 17 and 18, um, uh, which one of those was an outreach internship that we have do, we've been doing for several years now. Uh, outreach is um, is has been a great promoter of open source uh, software, and in turn has had sponsorship from um, many uh, industry. Uh, I mean, many, many companies in the industry and. They've they've been funding the pool such that we've we, we've been able to get a funded intern uh, for a period of three months um, to solve some uh, re really cool things in the past and and we've also had uh, a, an opportunity to add those folks as long term contributors uh, several outreach uh, folks uh, interns alumni are, are working for companies now um, you know working on OpenStack or related technology. Technologies uh, and continue to contribute to um, the upstream and stuff. So it's been a great um, opportunity for us to keep fostering. Um, and uh, and apart from that, uh, in this um, uh, during this last release, we also did we continued on university internships. Uh, these come to us once in a while. Uh, the foundation uh, works with us to kind of mentor a, a group of students who are going through their, you know, probably their f f uh, third or fourth year of uh, undergraduate degree or, or the second year of their master's degree. And they're pl they're planning to work through a uh, work with an open source community to kind of pick up uh, new skills, understand how the community is working, how, how software development is done uh, and, and such. Uh, so this is their, uh, you know, in-school internship opportunity. Um, and so the last one we had was with uh, Carnegie Mellon uh, in uh, here in Pittsburgh in the U.S. And it's been it was it was it went very well. Uh, this was a group of undergraduate students that learned a lot over the uh, uh, you know the, the time that they spent with us. That was a summer, um, so close to two and a half three months, and they they got to deliver a lot. And uh, a few of them are still continuing their work that they're doing um, with us. Um, and Ashley and uh, Carlos did the one on line 18 with an outreachy uh, program. So I'd let them uh, speak about it. But the, the one thing I would like to add is it takes a lot uh, of effort from the community to mentor um, and and a lot of dedication and willpower, right? And and that that, that has actually come easy for this community because of how awesome uh, the folks are in, in trying to teach new people. Um, and so I, I would commend that and I want that to continue and would do it, uh, you know, my bit to keep that going. Yep. Over to you, Ashley and Carlos. Hey, so yeah, um, like Gotham said, Carlos and I uh, co-mentored uh, Clifford Emeka uh, from uh, Nigeria. Uh, and it was, it was a pretty good internship. He's, uh, we managed to get two patches in one for the core manila changes and one for the python client changes uh they're still up they haven't been merged um frankly they they could probably use an update um which i will probably be following up on uh in this upcoming cycle and as for the carnegie mellon uh university students i've updated the sdk implementation kanban board that we have uh we have a bunch of patches uh in progress and only about four or five that are in review, I suppose. Uh, some could use some follow-up patches as well, but uh, for both uh, these major undertakings, uh, they're in progress. And at some point, I'll bring some attention to it in one of our weekly meetings to get some traction on them as well. Yeah, uh, thanks for the thoughts. And uh, as Gotham said, like uh, these internships, they take, um, 
a lot from the community to uh, keep them going. And uh, yeah, we had a lot of success with the internships in the past and that continues. So um, you will likely see more and more in the future as uh, like announcing a new intern uh, a new internship is that starting with uh, outreach or a university. And that um, is like, it has to do with, like, with a lot of things, but uh, one of them is we try to get more people involved and some of those contributors, they will stay um, with us, even though like their internship is uh, has ended. Uh, but at the same time, like it's a good chance for us to teach someone uh, and gets, get some things that we would like to get done uh, from our to-do list. So we can, it's like, two birds with one stone uh, and it's a very good situation and um, if you would like to get involved with like mentoring too please let us know um, we try to we always try to co-mentor um, we, we eventually uh, I mean there there were some occasions that we did mentor uh, interns like like had only one mentor but mostly we'll have we'll share the load and uh, if you'd like to get involved please let us know and then we can uh, try to uh, involve you on this as well but again this is these are usually great opportunities for us um, we are looking forward to have more interns in the future too so yeah uh, that's a pretty good thing that happens usually so thanks for the mention. Yeah, it was a really good cycle in terms of that. And um, some of you may not know this, but I think most of our OpenStack client implementation comes from the work that we did with these interns. It, it was not only one intern, it was like a bunch of them. Like we did one round and then we managed to get more interns in the next round and they would continue their work and they would work like on implementing new features to the OpenStack client. And then at the end, we did some sort of a hackathon to cover all of the things with functional tests. So it was a multi-cycle effort, yes, but it, it's great to see like things like that coming together and uh, all of the push we, uh, we do with the internships uh, coming to like, you know, such a, a great thing at the end. So yeah. That's only one great example of uh, what we do with the interns, but there are many, many more and uh, excited even for more uh, in the future. Yeah, so thanks for sharing the thoughts on that. And uh, bug management, uh, improved new bug classification and access successful um, bug squash event. Uh, Vida, would you like to, uh, I think you added this, uh, would you like to share some thoughts? Uh Sure. So, um, as you guys know, as we uh, uh, we have been changing bug management strategy quite a bit to improve things, improve tracking, improve monitoring, improve prioritizing, and bug fixes. And uh, so, the first item, uh, LUN nineteen, um, started uh, reclassifying the new bugs so that every time we <clears throat> do. for a sec there. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Uh, yeah, so uh, <clears throat> so now every time we review the bugs during the weekly meetings, we um, uh, flag them as triaged. So the new uh, classification uh, on Launchpad actually shows actual new bugs that haven't been triaged yet. And this has been a pretty big improvement. Um, I will add some stats here later, but just to uh, kind of whet your appetite, uh, we did in this uh, cycle, we had almost like 40% of uh, open bugs. Oops, Vida, can you hear us? I see you are unmuted, but we can't, I, I at least can hear you. Can you guys hear me? Yep, can okay. Sorry, we're having network issues today here. 
uh, some storms around us. And um, so, yeah, I'll add the stats, uh, keep this short, but we had a very successful uh, bug squash event and I encourage everybody uh, to continue contributing and thanks everyone who pitched in. So that's uh, what these two items were. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for sharing with that. And yeah, the bugs, uh, bug squash was indeed like a, a good thing. And also like the, the way we started doing things with like bug management. The bug squash, I, I say in particular, because uh, we did one similar uh, with a similar theme, a couple of, or basically in the previous release. And yeah, it's basically, a, I, we think it's a good idea to uh, at least try to focus on some bugs that are already in progress and that can get um can get closed they're like there's they only need that final push or only a couple of more reviews so that we can get those changes done and yeah that was a really good thing because um uh, we managed to close a, a, a bunch of bugs a bunch of in progress bugs and i produced a couple of releases and those bugs were uh landing so it was really nice to see like the size of the list of bugs that we managed to ship to, to people so yeah it was a really, really good thing. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for participating. Awesome. I just want to add uh, real quick before I get cut off again, in case. Um, we do always prioritize the bug management. Um, so as of currently, we have no critical bugs and no high important bugs. So that's something that we always uh, emphasize on. So thanks, everyone, again, for participating. Yes. Uh, thanks, Vida. Thanks for sharing that. And yeah, thanks everyone for participating. Like this is only possible because everyone invested their time and uh, focused on closing these new bugs. So yeah, a huge shout out to everyone. Um, next one. Um, I think uh, first, well, we managed to get uh, an impressive amount of features and bugs uh, landing on the previous cycle. And um, like, there's the exercise we do at the end of the cycle uh, that uh, like we need to, or we, it's nice to get some sort of cycle highlights proposed and then those are featured uh, uh, in the uh, OpenStack release. And writing those highlights was a really, really nice thing because uh, it was impressive to see the amount of things uh, we managed to land over the cycle and the huge uh, effort from everyone to get those features merging. So yeah, it was a really, really great thing to do. And also um, one of the features we worked on was picked up by the foundation to showcase like the work we did with operators to shape something. And that was pretty cool. There was a blog post that got them uh, worked on with the foundation. Uh, I think I shared that a couple of releases ago. And it was a really good blog post. It was really nice to see that being featured uh, to everyone and to see like Manila being showcased uh, for that. Uh, but again, special thanks to everyone uh, for uh, working on the features uh, progressively, starting to work on the reviews and trying to provide the feedback on the changes. Um, we had adopted kind of, uh, and that's kind of like another what went well thing for this release. Uh, we adopted a different strategy, uh, which was try to get things done like one week before uh, feature freeze. And uh, we, we kind of like had uh, a deadline for us or we, we were pushing before like the feature freeze week. So we wouldn't uh, be like waiting on a lot of things. And feature freeze week was a bit uh, more calm than it used to be. Uh, but again, like it's... Uh, a good effort from everyone to like you know get things going and get the changes reviewed and proposed and the comments worked on um to the dates that we were thinking about so yeah that's another thing i, I didn't mention it there but i think this is something that we can keep going like for the next release try to do things as early as possible so that uh we avoid some sort of a reviewer burnout at the end of the cycle and uh, we can keep it like healthier and dealing with other things like uh, at the end of the cycle. We had some unfortunate events that, uh, for example, like the CI breaking right after like the feature fees and it took some time to fix. Um, and then I can even imagine if like 
there was that issue and also a ton of changes to review and a ton of like patches to work on. So yeah, uh, it was really good to have this uh, uh, this done earlier in the cycle. And I really hope we can keep that going for the cycle too. Um, would you like to add any, any other thoughts on this? Okay, uh, thank you, Silas, as well. Uh, yeah, so uh, next one, the collab review sessions were helpful. And yes, we always encourage them. Uh, we had some for uh, this release and they are all posted in the OpenStack Mandela YouTube channel. And this is a very good exercise for us because it uh, it's kind of like proven that they really speed up the review process. Like there are some times that we uh, don't, get like some uh, initial traction on the features review. And if if we get those collab review sessions going, it's a very good thing for us because that way we are able to sit down uh, as a team and uh, we can talk to the change owners and they can walk us through all of the changes they are uh, working on. So that's a very good thing for us to do um, always because uh, I mean, that's a chance we get to just go ahead and talk and try to hash out as many details as we can. And then the reviewers uh, will be really appreciating that. And the reviews will become like really easier after actually talking to the uh, change owners. So yeah, that's, um, I think that's it that I would like to add for the collab review sessions. Uh, would you like to share something else? Uh, does everyone here know what is a collab review session? I think the uh, one thing I would like to add is that we, um, I think we, did we have a collab review uh, earlier in this cycle? Because we, we kept wanting to do it earlier in the cycle with with features that are ready and we we pushed from a previous cycle. Um, I'm not sure if we had one of those because I, uh, backup is one of those things that we didn't merge in the last cycle. We actually um, moved it to this cycle and we probably had a collab review for backup. Um, so stuff like that uh, is, is something that's really helpful to do, which is basically plan your release in such a way that you don't end up with a lot of things at the very end that, uh, you know, you, you, you get burnt out with or you end up merging stuff that's, um, that's not reviewed as well because there's a lot that's merging around that time. Um, so if, you, if you're working on a feature and, and it's in, you know, a good state uh, to, to go ahead and schedule a collab review, do not wait for the uh, feature freeze uh, time timeline that that would be the, the the you know um, it would be a good thing to just get done with the collab review anytime in the in the release so the reviews can actually pick up and 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 you know the feature can get merged much before the feature freeze deadline. Yes, thanks. Yeah, that that's a very good thing. And uh, I mean, to how would you schedule that? Like you. Just you can just say that in a Manila meeting, like uh, we usually go through the review focus, and that would be a good time for you to raise your hand and say, "Oh, look, I have this change, and I would uh, I already have like a patch that uh, it's in a very good place. So, would you like to schedule a collab review for that? We will very likely or 100% sure we'll say yes uh, because I mean it's always good to have those uh, for the chain for uh, some of like the bigger changes or changes that will require a bit more time to review so um, please just uh, bring that up in the meeting and then we can schedule uh, it and we can make the community aware by uh, sharing that in the uh, OpenStack discuss mailing list too um, so yeah that's a, a very nice thing. If you haven't seen one of those yet and you would like to know how they work, uh, the Manila you, uh, YouTube channel is a very good example for that. Oops. Yeah, thanks for sharing the links, Gotham. Um,
Okay. Um, anything else on this topic? Okay. Uh, thank you, Salen says no. Um, next one, I think, is from Saravana. Uh, would you like to share something, Saravana? Yeah. Hi, Carlos. Definitely. Yeah. So as we mentioned in the introduction, right? Like, uh, so we joined this project only two and a half months back, and uh, so yeah, we uh, so right now we are working with uh, the fit team. I mean, the team from Brazil, uh, Felipe, Kai, and Tiago. They are uh, really helping us to get all the KTs, and uh, that's going on. And uh, plus, right, what I liked from uh, uh, the Manila core team, right? Like especially like uh, you and uh, Gautam, right? And the way how you welcomed us to the project. And uh, even for PT Jules, I had a lot of questions and you and Gautam clarified a lot of questions. And uh, so I see like uh, there is a very good process put in place here. And uh, also like uh, you guys are supporting us whenever, I, whenever we ask any queries, right? So 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 that has been great. And uh, so I just wanted to mention that here and uh, because that's something like we felt that uh, it's very good, very good with uh, Money Latin. Okay, that's what I wanted to call out to you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, that's... Uh... That's good to really, really great to have you guys working with us. Uh, it's always good to welcome new people into the project. And uh, like the sort of hospitality is something that the Manila team is kind of known for because, I mean, we are very friendly uh, to work with. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. thank yeah, you I, very much for that. Yeah. And we are really happy to have you guys on board. Uh, looking forward to all of the uh, work we'll do. Uh, for this release and, that, and for the next ones. And uh, also one thing that I would like to mention, like if there is something we didn't do yet or uh, any information that you felt like, oh, it, it wasn't clear and you we could document that or you have like any suggestions for us with that, please let us know. And, um, or, uh, you know, if you see something in the documentation that don't match or you like clarifications or anything, please let us know and we can work together to um, make that process even easier for the next people joining the project because that's really important too, like this, these sorts of things. So yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, sure. Thank you, thank you, Carlos. Thank you. Okay, so... Um, Next, we have what can be improved, uh, proactive back parts, and why and how we do them. Uh, Gautam would like to share some thoughts. Yes, and I can get into detail of this if we have some, uh, you know, open discussion time uh, at some point in the PTG, right? Like in the in the lot of space that we have, and very few topics. Just kidding. We uh, we might actually run out of time to discuss the ones that we have, um, but. Um, well, we this is this this has been an unspoken uh, thing in the Manila community, uh, and mo mainly driven by uh, you know uh, motivations like like one of them that I have right, uh, and I've uh, I, I'm a, I work for Red Hat, which is a distributor of OpenStack. So there is an OpenStack commercial product that Red Hat sells to its customers, and for uh, for me, it makes a lot of sense uh, to have bugs that. Um, that are discovered in older releases fixed upstream first. Uh, and that is the default that we do at Red Hat. We don't really have a downstream uh, uh, you know, fork of, of, of open stack that we care to and feed as much as we do upstream. Um, so so it, uh, it, and so, what actually makes sense for me is in case there's a bug discovered in an older release, if the fix is there in the master branch, I want to get it back to as old as a release as we uh, as as possible uh, to end up supporting it, um, and and not worry about it that a, a user downstream is going to hit it at some point. Um, so that's that's the beauty also of 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 keeping everything open, correct? Um, and so, what is proactive about it? Well, if 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 you know the bug existed in a in a in an older release, you just go ahead and do the the bug fix uh, and backport it anyway, even without anybody asking for it. Uh, that's the that that's what proactive would mean. Um, and a lot of people have different uh, ideas towards this. And you know, if you're not gonna need it, don't do it. Uh, kind of a thing is the opposite of this. Um, and we've had the discussion here in community a long time ago and we said no we'd like to be proactive um and if uh, and and we're a good uh judge of what uh, whether somebody will will hit this bug and if can use this bug fix so let's just go ahead and and do the backports and stuff uh to even older 
and and somewhat unmaintained releases, right? Unmaintained releases going by what uh, OpenStack's own definition, the community's own definition of what those releases are becoming and stuff. Um, so at some point, yes, we can't we can't do those any longer uh, as as you keep going back in in time because the the release. Uh, does not have a stable CI, uh, uh, you know, that's going with it, and and CI is broken, so you can't really, you don't really want to merge anything that, um, and that's not well tested, uh, and so it, those those lines again keep keep getting blurred over uh, as you progress from release to release. So at some point, we keep dropping older releases, where um, as far as these bug fix backwards go, um, but. Nevertheless, it's actually been a lot uh, easier to do this to actually fix backport uh, to bugs in master and backport them all the way than it is to pay the cost much later in a different place. Uh, so I, I want us to continue encouraging that. And I wanted to, uh, I mean, as I was having a discussion, I think with uh, with uh, Saravanan, with Kirish, and so on, that uh, you know how these backports work. I think what what's good is we should have a doc. Uh, finally, because uh, I feel like we just talk about it amongst ourselves and we just learn it and then forget about uh, documenting it. Um, so if we, if it might be better sense for us to just write down why we think backports are important, what are proactive backports, and how somebody should do them, uh, and how somebody should review them. Uh, that 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 be useful information to capture. Um, so if you if you have any questions about that, I'll be happy to talk or actually go document it. Uh, and we can discuss it on the review the, directly and stuff. That's what I wanted to uh, mention about this. Awesome, thanks. Yeah, it's, um, I for one was uh, confused when I first started doing the back parts until I like got used to the process. And uh, yeah, sometimes I still like to uh, some mistakes uh, while doing some back parts and yeah uh, anyways that's how I have like some reviewers and they will take a look at those things uh, so definitely good uh, to have some uh, sort of documentation around that and document stuff and I think this is a good release cycle so you can start doing that um, there are, there is another topic that is also about like this uh, documentation processes and we can kind of uh, continue continue building on that or work on uh, different things too. But uh, we'll get to that soon. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, is there something else you would like to share? Okay, so uh, thank you, Silas. So um, the next thing, like we have two topics and they, I believe they are, pretty much the same thing or combined at least. So uh, it's basically related to code review participation. Um, I think Gotham, Vida and I had like some uh, some stuff added there uh, or at least mentioned one part of it. So uh, would like to start with this, Gotham. Sure. And um, we keep seeing ebbs and flows of this, right? Um, we can make as much progress as we have participation. Uh, and and as code submitters, you probably have, you know, faced this uh, frustrating, uh, ex have had this frustrating experience where you've finished something, you've coded something, you put it up on get it, and you've not had anybody looking at your code, right? And the reason that happens is because the community is quite busy and and it's actually pretty small uh, for the scale of code that we we end up writing and 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 reviewing that it doesn't really we don't really have um, a, a really f a quick turnaround and so off late what I notice is folks ping each other on IRC and and stuff and try to get attention to specific patches and we've also had a review focus etherpad that we keep. Uh, uh, you know, talking about week after week and and mainly close to the uh, end of the release, right? Um, and this has been okay, but I feel like, uh, you know, uh, these these solutions helped us better when we had a little more, uh, when we had a few more core active core reviewers than we do right now. Um, and, and the reason I say that is because, uh, I mean, right now on this call, uh, you know, we have just a, a handful of um, 
so so called core reviewers right and and the reason uh, that that is is folks their daily responsibilities they participate in other teams as well and things and and they're paying uh, lesser and lesser attention on the manila reviews as they did at some point um, and that so that's fine as long as we have enough number of them uh, that we can you know ro uh, uh, you know hand this off to and and share responsibilities with um, so i think we've mentioned this year in the past um, we are actively we as in the people that are in the core team right now are actively always looking to recruit more core reviewers and and the way you do that um, uh, is is by just telling folks that are in the core team that you're interested to be on that core team and and they'll give you the ideas and and how tos to actually get uh, get onto the core team uh, but very simply what it takes is just doing enough reviews and showing people um, that you're capable of, uh, of of reviewing code in a and and actually maintaining this code base um, and so that's i think the need of the hour uh, at the moment uh, we we need um, at least one or two more active core reviewers so we we feel less um, burdened uh, between the small uh, you know small number of active core reviewers that we have or we can have any number of people that are doing this uh, part time right like uh, and and their responsibilities are elsewhere that's okay too uh, that that happens. That's that's always been the, been the reality uh, in OpenStack to some extent. Um, so please let us know if you'd like to be part of the core team, so we can uh, you know work with you and try to uh, try to help the community um, you know through this stuff. Um, that goes to the second thing as well on that list, which is stable branch maintainers, um, which is is really the same thing but a little different. Uh, so. We have, as you know, a lot of stable branches that we continue to maintain because people in the wild that that use OpenStack always use stable shipped versions, tried and tested versions of OpenStack, uh, and and they, they keep it going for a while, right? Uh, and so we 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 would really like folks to uh, to be cognizant of what goes into those stable branches, and that's um, an extension of what the proactive backports thing was to saying it it involves that human element. Of of judging whether a, a fix is appropriate, whether the, um, the 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 any code change that's happening in a stable branch has been appropriately tested um, before it is part of that stable branch, and so it is actually a smaller subset of people that 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 maintains stable branches than the core team that you see uh, voting on the master branch and so on. Um, so yeah, so the, uh, if if we go by history, the way this has worked is you first are a, a, a regular normal maintainer of all of the Manila code before you become a stable branch maintainer of the same Manila code. That's just how it works, just because, um, you know, uh, you you want to make sure your responsibility towards shipped code is, is a little more um, this thing because you have less of windows to make mistakes there. Um, so that's it. Uh, so I, I would like for us to encourage more uh, core review participation, and and everyone on this call has 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 worked on this code base and and is learning it fast enough that you know you could you could potentially be that person and help us out. Um, so please get in touch, uh, if me, Carlos, or any any other core reviewer, and we we can we can have that discussion. Um, or oh, and not just on this call. If you're watching this on YouTube much later. Um, it's the same applies to you as well. That's it. Yes. Uh, thanks for that. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. And yeah, it's really important to have more uh, reviewers in the code base. Just to reinforce what Gautam just said, like uh, it would be really important for us to have more people involved in the code reviews um, for a couple of reasons, uh, honestly. Um, but, um, and, and there is something like, uh, you might be afraid at first of what the time commitment would be, uh, but uh, honestly, uh, it varies from like the part of the cycle we are. But I think all of it rely on uh, all of it relies on basically trying to have some sort of uh, review discipline uh, that you try to set aside, like. Uh, the time you can uh, every day. So, oh, I have 20 minutes to do review today. 
reviews today. So uh, if you get those 20 minutes every day um, to do a, a review, um, it might not only mean like the changes we are tagging you to the reviews, um, the changes are like also popping up on IRC and you can also see them like on Garrett, like they being submitted, you can create your, your own filters. But the important thing I would say is uh, trying to keep up with all of those changes and uh, can create your own filters. And if you have 20, 10 minutes every day to go over one change, uh, like the change you can take a look, uh, you'll see that you will get pretty much like up to speed with the code base, understand better what's going on in the uh, in the Manila project as a well. whole. And uh, we will like, you know, start gaining more trust and the reviewers with the reviews will become like easier for you uh, as the time goes. So in that we'll make like you eventually like naturally come to uh, become a car member because I mean that will won't feel like you know something that is quite tough like a heavy burden to care because you already used to do the, doing the reviews and you have that review discipline that every day you do like 20 minutes of reviews or something like that um, basically in that time that oh I'm I was doing something else I was uh, focused on writing a new feature fixing my CI and then I need like to uh, I need a break from that because like you know I can't uh I can't think clear anymore. So doing a review uh, or doing something else could be like one way of uh you know refreshing your mind and you also be helping the community. Uh because I mean it takes a lot uh a lot of effort when the reviews are done by a like small subset of people. But when we do that, uh we share that load, it becomes easier for everyone. And I mean, it's not only about that, like your changes will be much faster because uh reviewers will have more time to take a look at it because we are sharing the, the workload and we are trusting each other on the reviews. So that's really important. And uh, one aspect I would like to mention on this as well, like it's uh, some of the changes we uh, ended up like not having like quick follow-ups, I would say like both like from reviewers uh, or like one or when reviewers posted some comments, uh, those changes they took, like uh, those comments, they took a while to be responded. Um, it could vary from questions to like small changes in the code, but uh, it, it would also be nice if we could uh, try to work together on, oh, someone posted a review on my code. Do I have the time to discuss that? Oh, I'll let these people know, this person know if uh, I have the time now or I can like share, uh, answer the question so we can get the reviews going because it's kind of like, easier for us to forget the context if we like decide to follow up on the reviews like three weeks later than uh, like, oh, I posted a review now and uh, I'm following up three weeks later or, um, you know, so it's easier for us. It's uh, like fresh in our minds. So it would be nice if we had some some sort of a place to uh, look at the changes. Oh, someone commented in my change. Do I have the time to do that now? Uh, no. So I can let the person know or try to answer the questions at least so we can keep the discussion going. And uh, because otherwise, like it's always, it, it always feels like catching up on the context of the change and getting back to the reviews again. And uh, that becomes a bit more tricky. So uh, that's one thing that I think we can uh, try to keep uh, like, alert for that and try to follow up um, a bit uh, a bit more quick in the reviews. So yeah, uh, I think that's all I had uh, for this topic. Uh, would you like to share any other thoughts? Uh, you can also disagree with us and uh, have your own ideas and share them with us. Like that's uh, always welcome and we are always uh, open for discussions. Okay, uh, taking the silence as no. Um, oh, I think, sorry, I think we will be a bit uh, over time. Uh, and, but I think we are like close uh, to the end uh, of this call. Um, so uh, we have a couple of more items to, co uh, to cover. Um, the next one I would like to cover is basically something that uh, I've been talking about a lot with Gotham and that will come up a bit more during this week of PTG as well, I have a whole topic for that, but uh, I realized we didn't have um, any uh, place that we could see quickly uh, what you should do when you're submitting a feature or what we were expecting, because I felt 
that at some point it was sort of becoming like empirical knowledge and there were like some uh, issues within the communication. So uh, that's one of the things that I would like to, to talk about, uh, which is like um, we are trying and we are discussing uh, enhancements to the documentation to help everyone to understand what are the requirements and what are the deadlines we should follow uh, for every change we propose in Manila. So that's, I'll talk more about that later. That's something that we could definitely uh, have as an enhancement, but also like that, as I said, that could come together with the uh, proactive back parts and the other documentation that Gautam just mentioned, like we could build up on, on that or we could have like uh, separate documentations for those. Uh, but it's kind of like in the same groups of uh, things that we I, I feel we should uh, like uh, enhance our documentation so that it's easier to understand or easier for us to point people to a place where we already have all of the information. So yeah, uh, that's it for this other topic I had. And the last one is bugs are rotation. Uh, Vida? I think Vida had like some connectivity issues. I'm not sure if uh, she is, uh, the connectivity is better now. Uh, so we've talked about this uh, bug row rotation in previous PCDs and um, just wanted to bring everybody's attention to it. Uh, this role um, for many reasons discussed before, we wanted to have it rotational. So I uh, just want to mention that we are looking for a, um, for the next bugs are to carry the torch. Uh, if anybody's interested, um, please contact uh, either Carlos or myself and uh, we'll, we can uh, chat about it. But uh, hopefully some, you know, we'll have uh, more participation in this role uh, to bring in new ideas, strategies, and really look forward to working with uh, Community Bits this. So um, just let us know. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Vida. Uh, yeah, uh, that would be uh, one of the things like you, oh, I, if you don't feel like you want to get uh, to the car team or you want to get to the car team, but also do like the bugs are all. Uh, it's uh, also a very nice thing to learn more about the community processes and contribute uh, to the project uh, in, in different ways. So if you're interested in that, please let us know and we can uh, go over that with you and uh, share uh, some processes about that with you. Sure. All right. Um, I think, yeah, that's all we had for um, what can be improved. And we have some action items. Um, I think we, Managed to capture basically the most of the things we talked about here. Um, the first one of them that uh, got them uh, added here and that we discussed over this call was uh, to schedule the code lab reviews earlier in the cycle as early as we can. Um, also, please um, help increase our code review participation, which is like a theme for us. Uh, for a couple of releases now, but I think we are in the right track. And I think if we manage to do the reviews, as, as I said, like if I we've managed to spend a couple of minutes from our days uh, every day doing uh, one review, then I think the changes will be merged uh, faster, and we'll be able to get a lot, uh, a lot of things done over the cycle. So yeah, uh, and if you would like to get to the car team. Please let us know and we can totally help you out with that. And I think the last action item we have is uh, adding some documentation, as I said, like uh, for new contributors, uh, basically like on the feature proposal workflow, but also uh, some back part policies and uh, some how to's for those things. Uh, there's also another thing that we'll be bringing up that will come out, uh, come out later uh, in this PTG, which is um, also something uh, Gotham and I have been talking for some time that as the meant that uh, came up after working with some interns and it's called, we are calling them like Hallcasts and it's basically 
uh, a series of videos uh, that we would like to have recorded about like Manila, setting up your development environment and all of those things so that uh, we can help new contributors to get up to speed with stuff. So yeah, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, would, you like, would you guys like to add something else? Uh, taking silence as though. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's oh, we can wrap up then. Um, tomorrow we'll have like our meeting. Uh, our, our PTG agenda starts a bit earlier than it did today, if I recall correctly. So, um, yeah, and we will have a couple of topics we'll be discussing starting from 14 UTC and then the day will end at uh, 17 UTC. So, please join us. Um, yeah, I think a couple of people dropped already and I would like to get a team photo going now. Uh, sorry about that. Sorry for uh, having the meeting uh, going uh, a bit longer uh, than we were expecting. Uh, but if you don't mind, uh, can we do a team picture? Uh, we can do that over the week too with more people. But yeah, it's really nice to have those shared with uh, the foundation. That is cool. It's also a nice thing to see people's virtual backgrounds. I I don't know if that's a virtual background, Carlos. No, it's not. Like it's, it's not, it's right? Thing, yeah, I'm it's the real cool. one. Yeah, okay, it, lo it actually looks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's very nice. Uh, thanks. Yeah, it's uh, I'm the working. sunlight. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I'll stop recording. I think so. Yeah. Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, thank you everyone for uh the session. I'll stop recording, but yeah, we'll do the team picture now.